You're watching EAC News. Thank you for joining us. Philippine selection winner Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. said on Wednesday, 11th of May, that he would hit the ground running as president and was looking very carefully at candidates for his economic team while thanking his supporters after achieving a landslide election victory. The international community have started to welcome Marcos' presidency. Leaders from several countries have sent messages of congratulations of the camp with the president-elect Fernando Romaldas Marcos Jr. of Partico Federal Philippines on his implementing win of 2022 national elections. Marcos Jr., commonly referred as Bongbong Bong Marcos, is the son of the namesake of the late dictator who ruled for 20 years before his 1986 overthrow. He won this year's elections with a landslide victory. Previously, he served as senator from 2010 to 2016. If you're asking regarding with a martial law thing, I don't think that he will do the same thing because I, um, I mean, the martial law back in the Philippines, I think it's necessary because uh, there's a going anarchy going on in the Philippines during that time and um, a lot of people rebelling. So military power is needed, but the brutality of it, I don't think that will happen. But if this regards and making the nation great again, his father is one of the proponents and I think one of the best presidents that we ever had, so I think he will be. A member of one of the country's most notorious political families, Marcos Jr. is a successful accumulation of decades-long rebranding campaign that has revived the Marcos family name and image. A politician has a criminal record. And it's also the first time in history we're in a presidential candidate um, doesn't need to attend presidential debates doesn't have to present any platform, um, had convictions of corruption, but yet he won. So the qualifications in the law in the Philippines is very minimal. I think it's, it's only zero more than 18 years old and a, a Filipino uh, citizen, and probably that's it. So um, for years, that has been the problem in the Philippines in terms of um, candidates running for, for the office. Um, it's mostly um, about popularity contest. Um, most artists, because they're very popular, they, they tend to win uh, the seat. And that's what we're trying to, trying to avoid. And that's why this campaign or this election is very, very important. Because for the first time, we have someone like v Vice President Lenny Robredo, who's really standing and really uh, committed to um, a good governance. And, and we also saw that um, result because when she was the vice president, she made a lot of successful campaigns, um, especially during pandemic. Okay. However, I, might, I wanted to say that also first time in history, um, I've witnessed um, the power of people's campaign. Um, what I mean by people's campaign is what I've mentioned is like when Vice President Lenny Robred decided to run, she doesn't have any huge funds. She doesn't have any, um, um, a lot of support, especially financial support. However, through all the campaign period, I witnessed a lot of um, volunteerism from the Filipinos. We've witnessed kindness, creativity, and commitment by individuals, by Filipinos, to support a uh, vice president um, in her candidacy. And that's also in Cambodia, I've also gained new friends here because uh, we shared similar values. We shared same hope that finally we have a leader that who can make a difference. Born on September 13, 1957, Marcos Jr. is the second child and only son of former president, dictator and kleptocrat Fernanad Marcos Sr. and former First Lady Imelda Romandos Marcos. In 1970, Marcos was sent to England where he lived and studied at Worth School. He was studied there when his father declared martial law throughout the Philippines in 1972. He then enrolled at St. Emerald's Hall, Oxford to study philosophy, politics and economics. Despite his claims that he was graduated from a Bachelor of Arts in PPE, Oxford confirmed in 2015 that he had only received a special diploma in social studies, not a full graduate diploma. Having been in public service for over 25 years, Marcos Jr. has achieved a distinguished career in government. His electoral journey has allowed him to serve in several positions in both executive and legislative branches of government. 
His various stints in the government have allowed him to carve his niche in rich polity history of the Philippines. From 1998 to 2007, Marcos Jr. served as governor of Ilcos Norte, where he served for three consecutive terms. In 2007, he was once again elected as Congress, where he was appointed Deputy Minority Leader of the House of Representatives. While serving as Governor, Marcos Jr. has been accredited for transforming the province of Ilcos Norte into a first-class province, prime agricultural exporter and tourism hotspot, which he said to have achieved by capitalising on the strengths of the land and its people and looking for new modern opportunities to develop province. I'm actually highly satisfied with the result. I mean, I expect President Marcos, I will call him president now, even if it, he's not, um, what do you call this? It's not official yet, but despite, I, I believe him to win the election because of the surveys that's going on in the Philippines, the Octa research, and all those, he's been um, dominating the surveys. But a landslide victory after this election, the unofficial tally uh, last Tuesday, I think around 98% of the election returns was able to count was um, a 31 million vote. That, that's a history-making kind of um, election. Well, only this, actually this time, I mean, to see the election results, I'm honestly, I'm very, I'm very sad. I am disappointed. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of uh, emotions actually is happening. Until now, I still can't believe that there, the, the results of the elections um, I still can't believe that a lot of Filipinos were blinded by the truth. Um, and first time in our history that a presidential a candidate has a huge, massive votes um, in, in a presidential election. Moving forward, Marcos Jr. ran for presidential office in 2022 elections and won with a landslide, 31 million votes, leading by more than 16 million votes among the population of 110 million people in the Philippines. Marcos Jr. has said he would hit the ground running as presidential and stated he would carefully elevating candidates for his economic team with infrastructure, jobs and energy prices as the main priorities. Reflecting on his campaign, he said very little about his objectives and focus and more on a beginner's message and unity of the country that have been long divided opinions of the Marcos family and their fair-reaching political influence.